welcome K to many Americans. This is oxtail. Yes. And believe it or not, this stuff is really, really good. I know people are just now starting to catch on to that. That's why the price went through the roof. You used to be able to get this stuff for nothing. I mean, nothing. Pennies on the pound. Now, five dollars a pound. And there goes my phone as usual. Now over here I have some cross-cut um, hind shanks right here, which I'm thawing out. These were the frozen type, but those are great pieces of meat also to do with like a, this oxtail recipe. So I want you Americans to actually try this, and anybody who hasn't, oxtail is a delicious piece of the cow. This is the cow's tail. It's not an actual ox. It's the uh, the tail of the cow. Make sure the skin's removed and there's just a thin layer of fat there. You don't want a lot of fat. That thin layer of fat like this is really, really good. This is a well cut piece. And these are good size. These are about perfect size right here for most. I find some of the ones I like that I think are the tastiest are the smaller ones, even smaller than this, the little ones. I don't really have a lot of little ones here. I, I picked this one because I had a, a lot of middle, meaty middle pieces. So we're going to rinse it off with cold water. I've already pretty much done that, but you know, just take it in cold water and rinse it. Then what we're going to do is we're we're going to use a lime scrub, and I'll show you. Now that. One of the things I want you to do is get yourself some limes, and I want you to roll these limes like this. Just press them against something hard, like if you have a granite counter like this, and roll them good. And press. I'll get the juices flowing on the inside of them. And you're going to need a few limes, matters of the portion of meat you're doing. Uh, one set of package of meat like that, I'm not sure what the poundage was on it. Um, and uh, those hind shanks, uh, I don't really usually need to use this too much on the hind shanks, but I do use it on the oxtail. So there, we'll roll them like that. And then you can cut them in half and you can start using these as scrubbing brushes. Basically use them to scrub over and squeeze juice on the oxtail and this helps out with the taste of the oxtail, brings it out a lot. Okay, now I set a bowl here and I put a little bit of soy sauce in the bottom of it. You don't really need to, but I just added a little. Now here's your oxtail. I want you to take your limes like this and basically we're just going to scrub them, rub them over the top of each piece and I get to use two hands and I don't have a tripod today or any help so basically what I'm gonna do is tell you is hold one the oxtail lit piece in one hand this and the other give it a little squeeze you know and rub on the oxtail so you coat it with the lime juice then take the oxtail after you coat it and put it in here okay nice big bowl stainless steel if you have it or plastic okay we matter. finish our lime wash I'm gonna cut open the hind shank now uh, this is cross cut hind shank bone in I want the bone I want that marrow and everything don't take the marrow out whatever you do Yes, I've got mail. And, uh, okay, now one thing is I do a lime wash. I leave the lime juice on them. A lot of people rinse it off. Um, I think it adds to the flavor of this dish, especially with these spices that I use, which is uh, Keith Lorraine's oxtail and beef stew seasoning. This is the best, the best oxtail seasoning you can get. And you can find him online. Uh, just look at KeithLorraineSpice.com. Um, I remember the exact website, but you look them up, yeah, KeithLorraine.com. Uh, there he is. So look him up. His spices, I swear to you, are going to be something on a whole nother level from anything you've ever tried. You can't find an oxtail spice like that. And no, I'm not a paid product placement. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just my personal opinion. I've been using his spice now for a while. I used to have my own, and then I tried his, and I just threw mine out. I was like, forget it. This is unbelievable. So I, uh, I buy this stuff in large quantity, as you can see. <laughs> this is enough to do a couple of big, uh, big dishes like this and that. And I probably get two and a half of those out of one of these packets. So, uh, to do these up, so it's really, really worth it. As you can see, like I said, I buy a lot of his spices. And this is his too, but, um, yeah. But one big thing, like I said about this, a lot of people tr start saying that oxtail's gamey or, you know, I, I get I get really tired of hearing that word gamey. A lot of the people I have that tell me, oh, it's gamey, I think that's a cop-out. I don't think they know what gamey tastes like. You know, like a, a strong game like hog, a wild hog has a stronger game flavor to it. That has a more powerful taste than... Uh, 
these farm raised animals like this is cow this is the same beef you're eating every day just it's around a bone with a little bit of cartilage and fat with it I mean it's delicious delicious just try it and it's not gamey that's like saying any a New York strip is gamey or a t-bone it's the same thing same cow it ain't gamey trust me um, I just get tired of hearing that expression and that I think that's a cop-out from people who do not know what anything is I don't think they've ever tasted gamey food gamey food tends to come from wild animals that aren't raised on a farm these farm animals I mean we've got them on grain diets and everything else that they don't have any gamey flavor um, so you know that's a cop out. You eat this if you if you want to eat a nice juicy New York strip or a nice ribeye, then you'll love this too. You know this this the meat this meat if anything is more tender and has a better flavor, especially with these seasonings. Wow, than uh, anything you're gonna find. You know uh, there's no gaminess to it. So that's a cop out. And I think Americans just are scared to try new things. We're so used to what we eat. Uh, this was, you know, pennies on the pound, and now it's five dollars a pound. That should tell you some people are starting to catch on that this is a, this is one of the most delicious pieces of meat on the cow. This and cheek meat, that's another thing, and the tongue. I know that's a little far-fetched for many of you Americans to, to get into, but the tongue is extremely tender, and the cheek meat's really good too, if you cook it right. This, uh, this is delicious. I mean, delicious. I don't know why we haven't been eating this forever. I have. I don't know about the rest of you. But um, yeah, and then the cross-cut hind shanks, they're still reasonably priced. I mean, I get these for about five bucks for a pack of two. I mean, I guess that's reasonable. So that goes, uh, what's that, $3.36 per pound. So yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna get back to work. I'm running this video too long. <laughs> Oxtail. Okay, so now I've got the, um, the hind shank cross cut bone in we want the bone don't push the marrow out of the center of that marrow I mean I personally like to eat the marrow itself when it's uh, done cooking it's delicious but uh, it also helps really flavor this dish really well um, so you know this is my own oxtail uh, see, uh, uh, stew recipe um, a lot of people do it a little different this one's kind of a fusion um, my recipe is very similar to Keith's. You can find him on YouTube too, Keith Loren. Uh, he's got his own oxtail season uh, spice on there, uh, show on there, cooking uh, oxtail. He's cooking a lot of different things. Really good chef. Uh, this one's mine. It's a little deviation. It's a little different than his. I was kind of surprised how similar we were when I first found him on there and tried his spices, which uh, I'm so happy I did. But uh, yeah, so here's the cross cut hind shank. And you want to rinse this really well. This is a strong flavor meat if you don't. Uh, this, but this is so soft. I mean, this stuff is, this is beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna lime these as well, and then we're gonna drop them in there. And like I said, you don't really have to lime these if you don't want, because these actually are pretty good the way they are. But um, we're gonna lime scrub these anyway, and we're gonna throw them in here with the rest of the. Okay, oxtails. so now I finished the lime scrub, as you can see. Um, and it'll tar take them from being a little darker to lighten up a little bit as the lime sits on them. I want you to take some soy sauce. That's right, soy sauce. This is one I prefer, this brand, but you can use whatever you want. And we're going to drizzle a bit in here because we want it to get on. Now I'm going to move it around a little bit with the soy sauce in here. So just, I just want to rearrange a little so I can get the soy sauce down in there. Now you don't want to do too much in here though either. Too much can mess this dish up. Get way too salty. So that's about what we want right there now. Shaking in a little bit of it. Now you take some of Keith's seasonings. Keith's uh, beef stew and oxtail seasoning. This stuff is to die for. No Keith, I didn't cut the master's head off. <laughs> if you're watching <laughs> so yeah so here we go we're gonna sprinkle a lot now I'm gonna go generous with this because man this stuff is good okay so I've used over half of this thing I don't normally use that much on this dish but this one um, this is my last dish I'm gonna be making before I, a big dish for it before I go back to Thailand so uh, I have my mother over for dinner and she's go she loves this oxtail recipe this is uh, one of her favorites 
So I'm gonna make it extra spicy today. And uh, we just gotta mix this around with, you know, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty in here. Make sure you washed them first. <laughs> and uh, this is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna mix this all around real good. And then we're gonna put this in the refrigerator and let it marinate, cover it. I put cellophane over this or a cover if you have it. Um, yeah, uh, marinate this overnight. It's best if you let it sit at least 12 hours. Uh, I'd say the minimum on these is about four hours. I have cooked it in an hour because I was in a rush. But uh, yeah, definitely, you really want a minimum of like four hours for this to really soak in this flavor. I mean, it's the flavors are so good. Like, it's unbelievable the flavor that you will taste out of this spice. It's, Keith's spices are, are bar none one of the best I've ever had for any kind of beef dish. And I use it in beef stew, I use it in his oxtail, I use it in on steaks, I grill with it. This oxtail seasoning is unbelievable. Um, definitely in my top favorite spices to use. Uh, it's the, I'd have to say this is tight running for number one. I have one other that's one of mine, but um, I don't make that public to anybody. And uh, But that's for my spaghetti sauce, so this is a little different. This is definitely my number one for any kind of beef or meat or any meat. I mean, I've used this stuff on pork, chicken, all kinds of stuff. It does best with beef, but uh, I've used it on a lot. So, so there we go. Now we've really kind of put it in. I think I might add a little more even to this. I'm not sure yet. Definitely a little bit dab of soy on it, but um, yeah, so this will be it. So let's put this in the fridge and marinate it and uh, you'll be ready to, okay, to cook Okay, now it. I want you to take uh, about this much garlic, fresh garlic cloves, big ones like this. You know, so what I got, uh, five big ones, three small ones. Okay, and remember, one of these big ones we're going to slice up. The rest we'll put in the food processor. Uh, I want you to cut up some green onion, green onion straws like this. Uh, remember to leave the rubber bands inside. We want to cook that into it. The rubber bands give a delicious taste. It's a joke. Don't cook the rubber bands, people. Please. It's a joke. Pull them out. Put them to the side. You don't need them. <laughs> but yeah, um, so you should go with about a... It's up to your taste. Uh, I'm going with one green onion in this one, one bushel, little thing of them. Uh, you go with two or three. I know Keith does two, but I'm kind of a little more partial to just one of them in there. I don't think I need that much because I use a lot of yellow ones. Okay, now right here, I uh, went to the store. I normally have thyme growing, but I'm leaving the country, so I've been scaling back on my plants that need maintenance. I don't want to have anything here that needs to really be taken care of that well, because so I have somebody just watering. Uh, thyme, though, is something that uh, I think takes a little bit of treatment. So anyway, I found this at the store. I needed to buy thyme for my uh, my recipe here for the oxtail. And uh, I found this, and I thought this was pretty cool because not only is it about the price of the same thing of fresh herb for about the same amount, but instead of just buying the herb, I'm getting a whole plant. So I can cut away. You ever bought you know a bunch of thyme like this fresh, and you only need a, not even a quarter of it, and the rest, you don't have anything planned to cook right away that's going to use it. I mean, yeah, you could throw it in some dishes. Sometimes I can use it all. A lot of times, you know, half of this will go to waste. I like this because it has a plant. So I can remove what I need, and I can plant this, and then it can grow. And like I said, I, it, I, it's the same price as what I bought for free uh, for... Uh, it's the same price as what I bought for the same amount of time, fresh, uh, already cut off. So, I mean, the way I look at it, I'll use what I need to do with this. I'll plant it. If it, grow, if it lasts till I come back from Thailand, then it lasts. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But, hey, at least I got the opportunity, right? So this will get planted in my garden uh, while I'm gone. And uh, I will use the little quarter bit of it that I need for this recipe. Pretty good deal. Now one thing about cutting thyme. Um, you really want, for this recipe especially, but you really want to get softer stalks. You don't really want the hard ones when you get this. And I remove this straight off a of plant. So. Basically, uh, you can take your knife and you can, you know, cut into it like this. But a lot of times you're not going to cut those slightly harder stalks, and it's going to be a real pain. That's where I pull out my kitchen scissors. And I just clump it up like this, like so. Put it in, slice. Put it in, slice. And, I mean, you'll get through the whole thing of time and get a nice even consistency on the time because you kind of want to chop this stuff up. This recipe I'm making in specific, uh, I want this stuff to be pretty chopped up. 
this recipe requires this for taste. If you don't use thyme, you're going to lose a, a really important part of the taste of this meal. So, and then I can get a nice fluffy chopped up thyme. I really don't like stems. As you can see, I uh, removed this out of my garden. Uh, this was store bought off of an actual plant, as I showed you. But this right here is uh, cilantro, which is in this recipe. And the cilantro, I, uh, I'm fairly picky about stems, and I know they're not a hard stem, but here they are. As you can see, I removed my leaves off my stems. Uh, I'm picky like that. I don't want the harder chunks in there at all, so I just want nothing but soft, fluffy leaf in this dish. So. Now you should see me de-vein spinach. If you think somebody's anal and nuts, uh, you should definitely watch me de-vein spinach. <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely. This is um, this is how you do it. So chop it up with your kitchen scissors and make it a lot easier on you. Okay. Now to the ginger of the dish. Fresh ginger from Brazil. That doesn't matter. Um, you don't need this much. This is a little overkill here. Um, so I'm going to cut this just down to what I need. And I'm going to skin it. Some people leave the skin on this. I don't like the skin on this. I'm not a big fan of ginger. Period. Wow, this one's hard to cut. But uh, this particular dish needs it. There it goes. Weird. So, anyway, this is uh, about all you need right here. It's going to go into this uh, food processor. Uh, we don't need much more than that. So, uh, there you go. So get yourself out a piece about this big. Now, as you can see here, I have skinned the ginger. I don't want this rough uh, exterior skin on my ginger. So I've peeled this off to expose this, which is a, a pulpy, stringy uh, ginger, basically. Yep, my phone as always. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is what you need right here, and this is what we're going to put in the food processor. I'll chop this into three or four pieces just to make it smaller and easier for the process. Okay, a quick little video about some of the th ingredients you need for this uh, dish. Um, here is my chopped uh, ginger. Um, this is what ginger looks like whole. So this is chopped up. This is what I'm going to add to my dish. Whole yellow or Spanish onion. Uh, I've got one big one here, one medium right here. That's enough. Green onion, chopped, uh, one bushel, about this much garlic, as you can see. Now you're going to hold back one big one like this. Uh, well, actually, uh, yeah, a big one, like this one. I'm going to hold back one like that because I'm going to use that. That's going to be chopped up finely to go into my olive oil as it cooks. Um, you need thyme, finely chopped, fresh thyme. Uh, this is uh, cilantro, just the leaves, fresh. About that much. Got my thyme off this plant. Uh, ketchup, yep, and no preservatives added. Ketchup is a good choice. Uh, get yourself some extra virgin olive oil. I am right now reviewing olive oil and whether I'm going to continue to use this for this recipe. Uh, there's been some issues about heating olive oil, of whether it's healthy for you or not. So I'm going to look more into that before I make my decision. But uh, evaporated milk, you only need a can half this size, uh, four or five ounces, about five, six ounces maybe at most. Black soy. Black soy is a thick, sweet soy. It's not uh, salty like uh, the runnier soy. You will need the uh, runnier soy too. You'll need your oxtail, and I'm using crosscut hind shank mixed with oxtail. I've got them both in here. I'd really like the crosscut hind shank. I really recommend you use this too. You'll need a few limes, uh, you know, at least three, so you can use to uh, wash the oxtail down. This is already marinated before this, so I showed you how to marinate, and that's it right there. Um, so that'll start you, and also, uh, now here's pause. the soy I use for the marinade. Now this is a salty soy, this is like a regular soy sauce. The black soy should not be confused with this soy. This is a totally different soy. Uh, there's several soy sauce, probably have five or six different types. Uh, when you go to Southeast Asia, you'll find that out. Americans pretty much only know this one. But the black thick soy, right here, I use Healthy Boy brands, a very good brand to use. And uh, there you go. So, also, as far as the ketchup goes, if you want, uh, Thai ketchup. Yes, this Thai ketchup right here is unbelievable. Yeah, this stuff is awesome. 
it's sweeter than our ketchup. Our ketchup's a little bitter. Um, there's actually a little sweet. It's, uh, it's a really nice change. You should try it if you can find it. Not easy to find. You might have to order it from overseas. Uh, I pick this up when I'm over there and I bring it back with me. But this is Thai ketchup. I prefer this if I can use it. If not, a good Hunt's uh, tomato ketchup like this or, you know, Heinz or whatever you use will work just fine. Okay. Okay, one other thing we cannot forget, which is one of the most important ingredients of oxtail of this dish, is the spice. Yes, the spice. Now here we have uh, Keith's beef stew and oxtail seasoning, which I showed you before. Um, this Keith the Rain makes an awesome, awesome oxtail seasoning. I had my own seasoning prior to trying his. I saw his cooking show on YouTube and I tried it out and uh, oh wow, man, this stuff is unbelievable. And I've, I have friends of mine who have their own spice lines too and uh, yeah, this guy, he really, really takes the cake. I mean, this is, this is awesome spice for oxtail. Beef stew, anything beef related really, I mean that it blows the doors off anything I've ever had, and uh, I've had a lot. Uh, I travel the world, you know, all over the place, and uh, yeah, this is the best I've ever found. Um, so this is one of those things that'll bring people together. The cooking's so good. So enough about that. I'm not a paid product placement, but uh, that's uh, that's a definitely a good spice. So that'll uh, be the one other ingredient you need for this dish. Okay, so now that we've prepared all of the uh, ingredients, I got one little onion left to chop up, but that's fine. Uh, now that we've prepared all the ingredients and individual servings, have them all chopped up and ready to go the way we want, uh, you make sure that the, the oxtail and, and crosscut hind shank that you marinated, or whatever meat you're going to use, that you marinated uh, the, for at least four hours is now sat out for long enough to become room temperature. That's very important to this dish that the meat is at room temperature when you start cooking it. So, you know, it could take a few hours to leave it out. Now, this marinated overnight for uh, about 14 hours, and uh, now it's out on. Actually, I think it's been a little more than 14 hours, but almost 24, so probably about 20 hours. Yeah, so this marinated about 20 hours, and now we've let it sit out for about three hours, and it's coming to room temperature. And uh, we're going to get ready to cook now. One other thing you'll need for this dish is a food processor. Now, I know a lot of you are going to laugh at me because, uh, you know, I said this before. Uh, my other food, my big food processor took a crap, and uh, I'm down to this little one. And I've been meaning to go get a new one, like a nice big ninja or something. And uh, I'm still running on this little one because I'm uh, too lazy to go out and get a new one. So, so I have to do this in segments of chopping up my onions and everything. and. Uh, it's going to take a little while to mix. So as you can see, I do this in stages with uh, mincing this because it's in a small, small food processor. But again, if anybody you know has the need to send me a Christmas gift, you know what I need. I prefer the large ninja <laughs> that does a uh, blender and food processor in one. <laughs> and if you eat, and if you message me, I will send you my my address to mail me the food processor. I will not argue with a free Christmas gift because I will not be buying one until after I come back from Thailand, which will be in uh, Janu middle of January. <clears throat> Therefore, I will need a food processor for Christmas, just in case. A fella can dream, can he? Okay, uh, two more little things that you'll need. Uh, one is fresh ground black pepper, so get yourself a pepper grinder and grind it fresh. It's, better, it's best that way. And pepper to taste. So if you don't like a lot of pepper, don't put a lot. If you do, put a lot. Um, also, uh, fresh ground allspice. Yes, allspice. So get a grinder for this too and grind yourself some allspice. Or you can just take what's left of your pepper out and put your, this in and uh, grind your allspice. But uh, those two are Now, the other too. thing you're going to need for this dish is your pressure cooker. Now, get yourself a pressure cooker, a big one like this for this size dish. Make sure that your valves are working correctly, that everything's good, and that your seal is good. Um, this seal here, you need to make sure this is uh, not cracking or dry rotted or anything like that. Um, and you can also order these for whatever manufacturer you're with to uh, to make a new one or to get a new one for it. They're uh, they're silicone based uh, seals. So anyway, and make sure your valve is clean. So if it has your pressure release valve, 
and your emergency release valve make sure it pulls up and down and, and uh, you know, can let out air. Now if this gets too much pressure to the point where it could explode, this is what this is for. This releases the pressure. I recommend having one like this that, uh, that does all this. Okay. Okay. So now we're ready to cook. So now I want you to put your burner on high, uh, put your pot on, and now you're going to take your olive oil. Now, I've got issue with this. I might no longer use olive oil for this dish, uh, and I'll come up with a substitute oil because I'm finding that you, it's not good to heat olive oil uh, over 200 degrees. Um, I'm finding this out. I'm doing my research now. As a good cook, you should always research your ingredients to find out all about them. And as I research olive oil, I'm finding it's not probably the best oil for this dish. And I will come up probably with a substitute, and I'll make a further a video in the future explaining why I made this decision. But for now, we're going to use uh, extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin means it's certified twice um, as being uh, pure and with all the correct levels of um, acids and everything in it that you, you should have and vitamins. Okay, so we're going to heat this up a bit, and we're going to pour in some olive oil like that yeah, good little bit of olive oil so you see right there you know I just went down to here on the bottle so it's not that much and now uh, we're gonna heat that up and as this starts to get hot and runny we are going to um, we're gonna drop in some garlic that I chopped up that one clove I held back I chopped up and we're going to put that in, but we're going to be ready to follow it with the meat really fast. I mean, uh, we're going to throw this in, let it sizzle for a second, swing it around a little bit, and then we're going to throw our meat in on top of this because we don't want this garlic to burn in here. Now I'm starting to smell the olive oil, and it's uh, going to smoke here in a second. And that's part of uh, what I'm understanding is it's actually not good for the olive oil to get to this heat level. But, uh, you know, as I discover more, I'll make a video for you guys. So, but here you go. And we're going to drop that in now. Not quite sizzling level yet, is it? Um, so, yeah. Now, one other thing is uh, when you're cooking oxtail, um, you should have a, a very heavy handled or heavy duty uh, lifter like this. Something that can handle uh, the weight because it's going to be quite a bit. Also, if you have like a ladle type, you know, steel ladle like this or aluminum ladle, it's heavy duty. So you can dig down underneath because the oxtail gets kind of heavy and cumbersome and hard to to lift and move as you do this. So now we're sizzling here. We have our uh, our garlic starting to cook, and as it starts to take on a slight color change of a yellow, slight color change. That's when we're going to start throwing our meat in on top of it. Um, I think this helps uh, incorporate a bit of a garlic flavor to the dish. I'm a fan of garlic myself, as many are. And uh, we're just now starting to see them bubble around the garlic. Garlic's just starting to change color on the edges just a little bit, except for the one that fell out of the garlic, or out of the olive oil. Yeah, so they're just starting to now take on a yellowish, orangish edges on them. So now I want to start putting in my, my oxtail and my, um, also my, uh, uh, Crosscut hind shank. So, I'll put in my crosscut hind shank. Listen to that sizzle. That's what you want. You want it to sizzle when it hits. Might get hard to hear me in a second. But yeah, the crosscut hind shank definitely they uh, they give off a juice too. Now I put them down on the bottom to start for a second before I put in the oxtail. Now I want to. Flip them real quick. Again, another reason why you need this heavy spoon or heavy uh, lifter like this to work with anything like this in these pots. And I don't want this to stick, so I'm moving them around like that. I still have it on high heat. Flip that one again, let it sizzle on the other side a little bit. Now, this will get really soft and tender. So now I'm going to push them to one side of the uh, of the pan like so. I'm going to start throwing in my oxtail. Oh yeah, there you go. After I get a few in the bottom to where the bottom is pretty packed over here with oxtail sitting in the crack, I'll start pulling this this uh, hind shank over the top of it. 
exposing the other side for hind shank, I mean for ox tail to sit on. So when I hold it up like that, I'm going to throw this ox tail down in there. Oh yeah. I want to sear that ox tail in down there. And now I'm going to take the juice that was left over from the marinating, and I'll pour that down in here too. Like so. Now I'm going to lower my heat to medium, medium high. And that's good. And now I'm going to cover it. And I'm going to let it cook covered on medium, medium high for a few minutes, maybe about uh, 10 minutes. But uh, remember to take it every uh, couple minutes and just give it a shake like that because we don't want it to stick to the bottom. Okay, so now that you let it cook covered for about, it took five and 10 minutes, you know, not long. You shook it around every couple minutes, open it back up. It probably hasn't gained pressure yet, which is, you don't need it to. Uh, I just want to keep that steam in there a little bit to start right in the beginning. And we're going to pull it around now, move them around. Like I said, you're going to need a big heavy spoon for this or something like this. Because this stuff does not want to move around with you easily. And be careful of splashes too. Again, this stuff can splash. And you know, one thing I've noticed in my oxtail cooking is uh, I'm at my max here with this pot. I really need to get a bigger pot, a uh, much bigger pressure cooker. Uh, probably like a 22 quart pressure cooker would be good. This is about a seven or eight quart right here. Um, I think I should get a 22 quart. So again, another uh, Christmas present idea from my viewers. <laughs> if anybody wants to send a message, private message me and I will send you my address. And you can send me a 22 quart pressure cooker if you like. <laughs> hey, like I said, a guy can wish, right? Wish in one hand and what in the other? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. But this, uh, this is definitely, definitely a worthwhile recipe to make. <laughs> if you don't make any of my other recipes, this is the one you definitely want to make. Um, this is like a secret I'm giving out, literally. Um, I don't tell you my spaghetti sauce recipe because my family would disown me. That's a family recipe. But this right here is an awesome, awesome recipe that will bring families together, will make your friends worship you at the you know neighborhood cookout or whatnot. You cook this up and you bring this in to, to work for somebody, you will be the most popular person at your at your job. It's that good, literally. And uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a must have, must try. So, um, when, you, when you try this dish, you'll, uh, just when you smell it cooking, right here at this stage, you will know you have the winningest dish at any competition um, for any kind of beef stewy thing like this. This should be entered. In fact, I probably will enter it in something. I've never bothered entering cooking contests, but uh, yeah, I'll definitely probably have to enter this one. Uh, <laughs> so I got to say, you know, come and uh, come and try this out, make this dish, and uh, you won't regret it. So yeah, again, we want to stir this around a bit. We want to let the uh, juices start to uh, get through in the meat. Let this meat, you know, break down a little bit. Your uh, cross-cut hind shank, if you use it, you don't have to, will produce a lot of fluid juice from the meat. Um, and it, it just, it's going to be really, really good. And this meat gets really soft and tender, fall off the bone, uh, cross-cut hind shank and, and the uh, oxtails. Just delicious. So, uh, Again, if you don't try any other recipe I put on YouTube, uh, this is the one you should try. And if you do, you'll cook every recipe I make because you'll, you'll want to see, you know, what else I have up my sleeve. And I do. I have some really good recipes. Um, there's a couple I won't give you. Um, uh, spaghetti sauce recipe is a family recipe that we do not give out. Um, also, uh, the pot roast recipe. I'll, I'll give you guys a pot roast recipe, but it won't be the family pot roast recipe. Uh, that's one that if I get to know you well enough, you might get invited to dinner and get to try. Uh, the pot roast and spaghetti sauce has uh, been in my family for a very, very long time, handed down three, four generations. And uh, yeah, it's, it's that good. So you could open restaurants easily off of those two recipes. Um, as well as this. This is... I gave this one up because I had to give you guys something that was unbelievable. And uh, this is it. So... 
And uh, my old spice uh, set I used to use was uh, really, really good. In fact, uh, if you guys really want to know, I'll post a video of my spice mix for this dish that I used to use. But I found, uh, I decided to try it because as a cook, I'm always looking for new things, new ways. Any good cook does. You never accept, uh, accept it for what it is. You always look for something new and better and uh, the way to improve your dish. If you're not, you're not going to be a good cook. Now, here you go. Keith Lorraine's beef stew and oxtail seasoning. This stuff is beyond unbelievable and it makes this dish 10 times better than what I had it as. And uh, I'm no slouch. Uh, I can cook. So he definitely uh, beat out my spices and um, at least in my opinion he did. And in quite a few people I cook for his opinion. They all love mine and thought it was unbelievable too, but when I used his, it goes to a whole nother level. So I recommend using his spice too. If you don't, you're not going to get what I'm getting. So here you go, and uh, this this oxtail is definitely going to um, definitely gonna gonna impress anybody you cook it for. So I'm getting close. I'm getting some gravy going in here now. As you see, a little bit starting to form down there. I want to let it cook in some more, and then we'll start to add uh, some other ingredients, and we'll seal this back up. Oh yeah, can you hear it? I want to know, can you hear that? Oh, hear that juice in the bottom of that pan? Bubbling? Oh, that's some good stuff. The smell of this brings the neighbors out of their house. Uh, seriously, no, I'm not joking. Neighbors will come knock on your door when they smell this. Asking you, what are you cooking? How can I get some? It's that good. I really wish we had smell-o-vision right now. I mean, that's an invention I hope somebody out there is working on. Some kind of com some kind of computer that can identify what a, the, the elements of a smell is and can transmit it and have uh, through, you know, a, a minor lab chemistry set or something on the other side, the other computer can kick the smell out recreate the odor and kick it out for somebody. We really, really need smell-o-vision because something like this, if you smelled it, you would cook it. There is no way around it. One whiff of this dish and you will definitely cook it. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's that unbelievable. This is the world's best oxtail recipe. And this is an influenced recipe that is uh, highly influenced from South America, from the Caribbean islands, from Jamaica, from Cuba, and even Asian. We have Asian influences in here. That's why you see the black soy and stuff from Thailand, you know, Cambodia, stuff like that, like how they're using their oxtail cooking. Uh, we have Jamaican, Bahamas, you know, Brazilian. I mean, all these influences that cook this dish. Uh, a lot of South Florida. I live in South Florida, so I have a lot of influence, a lot of people here, and a lot of different cuisines all over the Caribbean, South America, Asia. They all come here. So we and Europe too. So I get to experience a lot of this from a lot of the people in my culture here, and I've influ combined all of these techniques into this dish. And uh, yeah, it's it's definitely uh, one of the best you'll ever have. Uh, I may even change this recipe eventually again to add a little more Asian twist to it now that I have a Thai wife. Um, I'm learning more of the Thai cooking. Uh, I did influence this dish some with Thai cooking already, which is this, and uh, of course Japanese Asian cooking here too. But um, this is uh, definitely going to probably end up with more influence from it as I perfect this dish even further. In fact, I never find any dish is perfect. Uh, I think a dish is a work in progress, is constantly being worked if it's uh, going to be done good. You shouldn't always make it exactly like your predecessor did or what you learned from. Put your own touches to it, always try to improve it, and over time a recipe will become unbelievable like this one has um, because of all that, that constant touching up and adding and trying new things. Uh, my family sauce recipe has improved over time due to uh, generations of adding things. Like my grandmother, you know, added her touch to it. My mother added her touch to it. I've added my touch to it. Now my mother's sauce is a little bit spicier than mine. Uh, I have an ulcer. I don't like it as spicy, so mine's a little more held back. Um, but the flavors are deep and robust. And that is what people fall in love with in our recipes because we have that. Um, like my mother's would be slightly different than mine. Um, 
but if you don't keep uh, processing the recipe and making it go further, uh, you might, you know, now again, if you have something great, you can always keep that as a base recipe, but you can always add to it and make it better. There's always a way to change it, and, and everybody's tastes are a little different too, so what some people might think is unbelievable, other people will think is great, but it's not going to change their life. So there might be something they want to touch of to change their life. This dish will change 90% life. Uh, the only thing, the only problem I've ever had with this dish is with Americans because they hear oxtail. And right away, they're like, ew, you know, that's dirt meat. Well, I'm sorry, my fellow Americans, oxtail is an unbelievable dish. It is one of the better cuts of meat, if you ask me, as far as its taste and tenderness. And same thing with the cross-cut hind shanks. I mean, they're tender, they're juicy, they're a really good dish. So, and like I say, you need a big spoon. You will break those plastic spoons doing this, just stirring this up. But yeah, this is uh, that's one thing with oxtail and stuff that uh, the only thing I've ever seen is people that wouldn't even give it a chance because they just heard oxtail. It's just like somebody hears cow tongue and first thing out of their mouth is ew, you know? But they've never tried it and it's actually a really, really good dish, a really good meat. But uh, same thing with this. So I've had people, you know, tell me, oh, ooh, I don't want to, and they won't even give it a chance, you know? And even though if they actually took a bite of it and in their own mind, you know, they they'd know it was damn good but you know this is just what we get with uh, prima donna americans um but i i highly recommend this to my american friends too you should definitely try this dish if you don't try anything else i make um and I, it has caribbean and uh and everything uh, uh influences um this dish is is highly loved in the caribbean and in south america and in asia Surprise dish. It's really really good. So, uh, I, you know that billions that eat this can't be wrong. So, you know try it out This recipe in particular and definitely make sure you get Keith Lorraine's oxtail seasoning You won't regret it. Uh, definitely a master chef Well now I've recovered the oxtail and it's been cooking now for a good uh, Oh open it's been cooking for at least 20 minutes. We closed it for about between 5 and 10 minutes to start shook it around a bit now we uh, cooked it uh, open for about 20 minutes and kept stirring it around as you saw. And uh, now we've closed it. I'm gonna keep it closed for about five minutes. The pressure's already charged, so we're ready to go with that. And um, so then the next step will be after this has happened, we're gonna open it up. And uh, remember that uh, onion, green sauce onion that we made right here with all the onions and spices and everything. We're gonna, we're gonna add that to this dish. As soon as that's done, we're also going to add uh, some water later. We need to add our uh, ground pepper and uh, allspice. And uh, then I'm also going to show you actually first how we're going to add, once we reopen this, the black soy. And remember, don't mix this up with regular soy sauce. Soy sauce is salty. Black soy is sweet. Okay, we let this sit for about another five minutes. And we're shaking it like this. Like I said, just keep it from sticking to the bottom just in case. And uh, now we're going to open the oxtail. Now, first you got to release the pressure. Take your thing and press against here. Now, all pressure cookers are slightly different. I'll remove it off the heat some. Sometimes that can help to speed up the process of the uh, pressure coming out. Now there we go, now our thing's dropped. We've released pressure. I will open it now. Now when you tilt it, tilt it away from you like this. Let that steam come out the other side first. Because if you lift it straight up, you'll get a lot of really hot steam right in your face. So there we go. Now we've opened it. We see the juice the oxtail has in the bottom now. Oh yeah, see that? I don't know if you can quite see that. It's, uh, oh yeah, and it's got a beautiful coloring to it. The smell is just unbelievable in this stuff. So now we've cooked our oxtail. Uh, this is pretty well done here. Now, what we're gonna do is I want you to grab your allspice 
and just grind some allspice into it. You only need about, I don't know, six turns maybe, seven turns of your thing, maybe eight. It's up to you. Between six and eight, whatever you want to do. Okay, I want you to take your pepper, your black pepper, and that's totally taste oriented. I mean, if you like one or two turns, if you like ten turns, it's completely up to you. Remember, the more pepper you add to this, the more spicy it'll be. Um, it'll actually take on a uh, almost hot spice to it, so you don't want to, if you don't like that, don't put too much black pepper in it, trust me. In fact, I just put a little more than I normally do. But I've got a lot of meat in here to, uh, to cover, so we'll stir it around a bit like that. Now what I want to do is take my black soy, yeah, Healthy Boy brand black soy. So you see, remember this is sweet, not salty, not bitter. So we're going to take this black soy and I'm going to put it just like this. Just evenly kind of spiral it around. And I don't want to put too much. That was probably honestly a little bit too much. But that'll take care of that. So we'll spin it in like this. Get that black soy in there. Mm, now look at the color of that oxtail. That black soy just makes it like a golden reddish brown. Just, oh, it looks like it has a glaze all over it, like a beautiful thick uh, brown sugar glaze. That's what it looks like. And it's uh, it's intense. This is a really, really good thing to add to your, uh, your dish. So now that we've done that, I'm going to add the green onto the top, the onions and everything that we mixed up with our spices. I'm going to throw that in here now. As you can see, put that right on top, just like that, the whole thing. Don't hold any back. And I'm going to spread that over the top of it like so. Stir it in. Let this get all over it. Mixed in there real well. And in a second, we will talk about uh, one other thing that we haven't really talked about, uh, and that is uh, what we're going to put with our oxtail. I can't just have meat now, can we? So this is a stew. I mean, this can work a multitude of different ways. This, uh, this can work very much many, many, many different ways you can use this. Um, now, tonight I'm going to be using carrots and cauliflower. Uh, I've used carrots and potatoes, and I like to cook my vegetables separate from this dish, uh, for the most part, 75% or more cooked, and then incorporate it into this dish and let it stew with it, because I don't want to influence it too much of the other flavors coming into it, as I want this to influence them. So this uh, tonight I'm going to be using, like I said, uh, I will have some carrots in here, I mean some uh, potato, I am going to probably put a little bit in or put it on the side, uh, but mainly I'm going to use cauliflower this time. I want that incorporation of that cauliflower. I want this flavor to blend in the cauliflower. I think it's going to be wonderful. I've never tried that before, but hey, you know, this is what it is. Play around with your dish. Try it the way you like it. Uh, use any vegetables you, you know, you desire, you think are going to be good with it. Now, your basic go-to, carrots and potatoes. Everybody in America likes that, right? Beef and potatoes and carrots. Uh, yeah, that's kind of an American staple. So, uh, you can do that, um, and like I say, you can play with broccoli, cauliflower, uh, any number of things, okra. Uh, I've seen uh, Keith likes to use uh, butter beans in his, and he uses dumplings. Uh, I'm not a big fan of dumplings in mine. I tried it on the last show. I put them in because of uh, Keith's influence. I, I didn't really like the dumplings in it, though. For, to me, the, the dough was a little, I don't know. To me, it took away from the dish, and some people love it, I'm sure. Uh, but I prefer this particular method. Uh, I don't like the dough in it. But um, you know, whatever you want to do, man. I mean, it's everybody's got their own flavors and tastes that they like. So, another thing I've done is I've taken about three cups of water here. Now, this water doesn't look like water because what I've done is I've taken the marinating bowl, which I had here while the oxtail overnight in, and I rinsed it with the water. And instead of dumping the water down the drain, I dump it in here. That way it keeps some more, any little bits of that spice and stuff still left in there. It's going to be delicious for the juiciness of this dish. Now, uh, I'm not going to dump that in just yet. 
but that's uh, three cups of water. So, but I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the lid back on this for a few minutes. I'm gonna let this get to about uh, yeah five to ten minutes, something like that. I'm maybe ten minutes. I'm gonna let it sit here and absorb those onion flavors in there and the allspice and the pepper for a minute and the black soy. I'm gonna let it engulf that, and then I'm going to open it back up and add the water. And uh, I will also be adding the evaporated milk. Uh, you only need about five ounces of evaporated milk, four or five ounces. You don't need a lot of it. And uh, we'll continue now, and uh, we'll be adding the ketchup too. Actually, wait a minute, I forgot the ketchup. Good reminder, huh? So I will add the ketchup now. While I do that, so here we go. I squirted in my ketchup, as you can see. Um, you know, you don't need a lot, quarter cup, you know, a uh, quarter cup of ketchup's good, maybe a half, you know, it's, you know, whatever you're, whatever you feel like, ketchup-wise. And, uh, you don't need a whole lot for this dish, really, you don't. Um, so here, we are mixing that ketchup in there, getting it all in, mixed in. And again, that ketchup will, will help with this dish. Um, the uh, adding of ketchup to this dish actually came from Keith Lorraine. Uh, I saw that he was using ketchup. I had never used ketchup in this before. Um, I have used Coca-Cola, <laughs> which I think works too with this dish. Um, I'm not using in this particular version. But uh, yeah, you can always experiment with different things. But the ketchup, I added it to try it out and I found it was pretty good. It did add a, a certain element of flavor to the dish. So I've added it and uh, I'm very happy with it. So thank you, Keith. Um, so anyway, so now we're already up to pressure right when I put the lid on, as you can see. So we're gonna shake it a little bit here and there. We're gonna let this thing uh, do its thing for about five five minutes, maybe almost 10. You know, it's kind of up to your okay, judgment. Okay, so now I've opened it back up. Look at that. That's with the ketchup and everything in there. Mm. Beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, look at that gravy this thing has produced. I mean, that is just unbelievable. I mean, it all on its own creates its own gravy like this. I mean, it's just wonderful. Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to add our water. So, take those three cups. Uh, you don't have to add the whole three cups. Kind of add what you feel you need. Now there, I've added about two cups. And I think I'm kind of getting close to what I want. Um, maybe I'll add a little bit more, I don't know. We'll see. So like I said, play this by ear, you know, do it as you feel. If it looks like it's thinning out too much, then uh, don't add any more. You know? Now one other thing I've done, which we talked about, was uh, added vegetables. Well, here you go. I have... Um, decided to open a can of potatoes, whole baby potatoes, and I've chopped them up. Now, a lot of people are going to laugh at me or call this a sin of cooking to use canned potatoes, but here's what happens. Yeah, you may forfeit a little bit of flavor because you're not using that fresh uh, that fresh potato, um, and you're not you know cooking it yourself, but I'm saving a ton of time this way, so I'll take the sacrifice. The other thing is, people argue, and it's true, you'll lose vitamins. Uh, canned vegetables do not hold the vitamin content of fresh ones. Um, so, yeah, I'm losing a little bit of vitamin. But you know what? It's saving me a ton of time. They'll incorporate the uh, flavors very well because they're already softened and cooked. I don't have to worry about any influences from them on the meat. Um, and I'm going to do uh, the baby carrots too, which I'm waiting on somebody to bring me right now because I forgot to pick them up at the store. <laughs> so uh, they're coming and I'm going to boil them myself. I'm using the little baby ones that are already shaved. Uh, I like those. They're pretty decent to work with. And when you boil them, they, they soften rather quickly. So otherwise, though, I'd shave and chop my own carrots to put in here. But we're going to throw the potatoes in, and I'm going to start working on the broccoli now. So, But we're not, actually, I'm not going to throw the potatoes in right this second. Uh, I am, however, going to do the evaporated milk. Now, here we are with the can of evaporated milk. And this is a 12-ounce can. I don't need even a little less than half of this. Uh, so we're going to pour. This was the only size the store had at that time. Uh, there we go. I'm a little above half. As you can see, I haven't used that much of it. And uh, we'll stir it around in here a bit. Yeah. 
so. And you see how it changes the color of that gravy? Oh, this is going to be good. This is going to be so good. So I'm going to cook this down a little more now. And uh, like I said, uh, when I reopen it, I'm cooking for another 10 minutes or so with the lid on. Let it get pressure up and, and cook. And I'll open it up and I'll reevaluate whether I want to add a little more water to it or even maybe a little more of the evaporated milk. But this is pretty good. I added about four ounces of evaporated milk, I'd say, to this. Uh, almost five, so we're good for now and uh, I'm going to seal this back up. Remember I still have another cup of water on standby if I want to add and I have another seven eight ounces of um, evaporated milk sitting there too as well as and then uh, pretty soon we'll be adding these um, and we'll get going. This is working out pretty good. Okay now here we go. Uh, our dish I just removed the lid. Look at it bubbling and churning in there. Oh, look at that, and that gravy and everything. Remember, now we're only at uh, two cups of water into this right now. We didn't add the third, so we still have that. I think I created a good enough, thick enough, and uh, good enough gravy. I don't really want to thin it too much more. Uh, maybe I'll add a quarter cup or something. Just spread it a little bit. Don't really need to add any much water to it. And I think I've added... Plenty enough of the milk too, the uh, evaporated milk, don't really want to add too much more of that. Uh, this looks pretty good to me. So now I'll start incorporating uh, my vegetables that I got. Now this was the canned, um, the canned whole baby uh, potatoes, which I chopped up uh, small because I don't like them very big chunks. Uh, you got to be careful now, you can't really stir it too well, you might mush them up get to shake it like I've been showing you. Now I am I got the lid on so if I shake it now it's going to splash out of the pan but you know this is the idea so we're adding in those uh, potatoes which are going to taste great in this dish. Uh, I got my water boiling for my carrots uh, are getting ready to boil. I'll turn that heat down now to a simmer just to hold it. I'm waiting on the uh, carrots to get here <laughs> as always. Waiting on something. So now that we have this in this dish, I am going to also go and get the broccoli going. And I'm going to start the broccoli now and start steaming the head of broccoli. And, uh, you know, I'll incorporate that. I don't want to steam it till it's mush. Uh, you want some, some kind of consistency to it so it doesn't fall apart in the dish. Um, but yeah, it's going to be delicious. And, uh, yeah, if you've heard my phone ringing off the hook since uh, you've been watching, uh, you can thank the campaigns of Biden, I mean of uh, Obama, of Mitt Romney, and of all the local legislature and crap that are all running for office right now, because even though I'm a member of the federal do not call service, um, I, I am getting literally a phone call every 10 minutes. Uh, and this has been going on all day. Today is the 5th. It's the day before voting. And uh, you know what? This is my message to all these campaigns. If your uh, people have been calling me and harassing me, I'm not voting for you. So I might not be voting for anybody on the ticket this year because uh, they're all calling me like crazy. So, you know, I'm kind of pissed off and they're breaking the law because it's the do not call service, so. Okay, so now I put my broccoli on and I've got it getting ready to start steaming. I have my water ready for carrots getting here any second. And I turn this down and shut it off, and now I'm turning back on to give it a little bit of a simmer because the oils are separating. And uh, just to keep it warm. And uh, as that cooks, and I'm going to cook this oxtail for a while. Uh, I've opened it back up, and you look how beautiful the tone of this oxtail is. I mean, it is gorgeous. But now, I want to start act adding the cauliflower that I've, I've uh, softened. Now, I've softened the cauliflower to where it's, you know, peel off it. You see how it's not so soft that it falls apart too easy, it actually peels? Mm. Mm. That's how I want it. I don't want it to be too, um, too well done. But I want it to hold together well. And the last little bit of softening will happen in the pan. Now, I'm putting big chunks in like this. I want it to incorporate the, uh, the flavors. Now, you can't get them all big, but you know some will some will end up smaller. But 
you know, you can do what you can do. So, I have my chunks like this. I'm just going to lay them in on top for the most part, like this. Now, what I want to do, once I get them all in here, try to fill every spot so that you have, like if you see, you can make room, you know, move one over. Try to make room to fit the bigger, you know, the, to fit them in. Because the whole idea is that I want them to evenly get, like look at this giant piece. Let's stick him in there. I want them to evenly get flavored. Now, I put them all in here, and I'm going to take my lid again, put it back on, leave them just like that. Now I want to put them uh, to low. Uh, medium low, get them going a little bit actually. Uh, you could start them on high and count 60 seconds literally to get it, uh, you know, bubbling and churning pretty good in there. And then drop it down to to a low, low simmer. And you could shake like this. Now don't shake really hard, but get it good like this. Because I don't want them to fall in, but what I want them to do is get that gravy on them. So I'm going to shake them like this. And that's making that splash all over them. And then once I know I can feel it by holding the handle, I can feel it bubbling and churning inside. So I know that we've got uh, we've got it going. Um, then what I'll do is I will lower it to simmer. And I'll let it sit for about five minutes or so, five to ten minutes. And then what I'll do is I'll open this back up and we will remove as much of the bigger pieces of cauliflower as we can and we will put them aside in a bowl where after we uh, finish our dish we can you know add them to the bowl as it goes I don't want them to get to turn into mush inside this uh, I just mainly want them to have that incorporated flavor so when you if you put this on a plate or a bowl you can put the cauliflower on the side and the oxtail on the other side and then uh, there you'll have your your meal. Uh, I want people to be able to eat that cauliflower and have all the flavor in it, but not have to uh, to deal with it turning the mush in the dish. So now we're. I can feel it simmering inside. I can feel it bubbling and churning. So I'm going to do a little shake like this, and then I'm going to let it sit on simmer on the lowest setting on your stove and uh, cook a little bit, about five minutes. So now that I've uh, I've cooked the cauliflower in a bit. I'm going to use my picker upper thing here. I'm going to pick up the cauliflower like so, drain it off a little bit. But all that flavor is in that cauliflower. And I'm going to put it in a bowl to the side. Try to catch each one. A little bit's going to break off. Don't worry about that. You just want the majority out. And put it into here. Especially get to the biggest ones first. Try to get them out. Yeah. Now, one thing a lot of people don't know is uh, oxtail has actually been cooked for hundreds of years in England, you know, Britain, uh, the French, the Irish. So this is not new to Western society. Uh, you know, this is something that I know a lot of Americans, when I talk to them, even cooks, seem to think oxtail is like a Caribbean island, Jamaican, uh, you know, Cuban. Uh, Brazilian, you know, type of dish. They don't, they don't realize that, uh, or Haitian. You know, Haitians make this too. Uh, what they don't realize, though, is that this has been being cooked way before by, uh, by the English, by the French. You know, this has been around for a long time. I mean, people didn't waste food back in the old days. They, they cooked every part of the animal, and. Um, Oxtail is, wasn't considered a bad part of the animal. It's considered actually one of the most delicious parts of the animal uh, to cook in a stew. But uh, for some reason, Americans seem to have uh, lost that and seem to take it as a byproduct of meat, uh, a not as good cut. And uh, you know, I think that's a big mistake that Americans are making by missing out on um, exactly what oxtail has to offer. I mean, this is this is a wonderful, wonderful dish, and I've been. I've proven that to many, many Americans that I've cooked this dish for, that um, when I first told them what I was cooking, they turned their nose up to it. Uh, I get the same uh, effect from uh, Thai boat noodle soup. Uh, I like the pork one myself, the pig, uh, but uh, yeah, they, they make a dish and they use blood in it though, uh, Thai boat noodle. 
and uh, they use pig's blood uh, or beef blood, uh, whichever one they're making, but I prefer the pork. But uh, yeah, the, I call it a blood noodle soup as well, um, is my name for it. And it is delicious. I mean, if people could just get their head off of the fact that you're using blood, I mean, when you cook any piece of meat, you there's going to be blood in that. Unless you're a vegetarian, I don't see why you wouldn't <laughs> have a, why you would have a problem with blood, you know? Um, but yeah, oxtail again, it's just one of those things. It's a delicious, delicious piece of meat. And uh, it's wonderful. If you cook it right, especially like this, it is unbelievable. And uh, definitely worth trying. And like I said, it's not just a Caribbean island, South American, or even, you know, anything else, it's, or Southeast Asian. This has been cooked all around the world. And uh, yeah, even in your forefathers' country to a lot of Americans uh, from the uh, European descent. The Europeans have been using it. Um, you can probably find oxtail cooked in just about every single culture. But in America, it's been viewed for many, many years as a byproduct meat, something that wasn't desired, therefore, it, you know, wasn't being used very much. Uh, but I know what, we're bringing it back, I know, because the price is, you know, five-fold from what it used to be. You used to be able to get a pound of oxtail for like a dollar. Uh, half the time, they used to give this stuff away, literally, just like beef marrow bones. You know, they used to give those away for free to, to feed to their, Americans would feed them to their dogs. Uh, but you can use beef marrow bones to make some awesome, awesome beef stews. Um, as the flavor from the bone and marrow is just wonderful. But this dish in particular, I mean, uh, it's gone up now, it's like $5 a pound. You know, and that happened for a reason, because more and more people are starting to realize that this isn't a byproduct meat. This is a delicious, delicious meat that everybody should try. If you're not a vegetarian. <laughs> But uh, yeah, right here. Now, as you can see, the cross-cut hind shanks that I put in here, or the meat just kind of fell off the bone. Now, that's a signifier that this is pretty much done. I'm going to add my vegetables here, uh, what I have left, the carrots. And uh, inside the middle, the marrow has fallen out. And if you're the lucky one who gets a piece of marrow when you're eating this, mm, you're lucky. Because the marrow is delicious, too. Um, but yeah, it, it flavors this meat, it flavors this dish wonderfully. Um, so... Uh, without ado, we're going to uh, finish this up and get ready to eat. Now, as you can see, our stew is about ready. I've added a little more of the uh, potatoes to it. And uh, we have my carrots are done. They are uh, pretty much almost always soft. I want them to be a little firm when I add them to this. Then we can shake them in a little bit. I'm not trying to rip anything up that's softened already in potatoes and stuff. So we'll get these to go down into the dish, like so. And uh, I'll put the lid back on and I'll cook this for another 10 minutes or so. And uh, they're already soft because we've already boiled our carrots or steamed them, whichever you like. And I'll put this in here. And now, they will uh, cook for about 10 minutes on, uh, we'll bring them up to medium to get it simmering. Like I said, grab your handle. You can feel them bubbling in there and then uh, lower it down the simmer and let them simmer for a little while. Okay, now here we go. We have completed our oxtail. I just depressurized it and opened it up. And we've, uh, like I said, added uh, the potatoes and the carrots. So we've got pretty much a very American dish, beef, potato, and carrot. And I have on the side ready to go is the uh, cauliflower, which I have kept warm. And we had removed with the, uh, it caught up the flavor. So now I'm going to prepare our plate, our bowl, and uh, mm. we can eat. So now, taking my ladle, dipping it in, getting out some of that gravy. Mmm. And pour it in over the parts in my dish. So what I did here is I have uh, put in a piece of oxtail. I also put in a piece that just falling apart of my uh, hind shank cross cut bone in. I have the potatoes and carrots in here. And here's some of the cauliflower on the side. Wonderful dish, ready to go. Mm-mm-mm, oxtail. Hello, people. Thank you for coming back to Wayne's Kitchen and enjoying uh, another wonderful dish that we've created today for you. Um, today was oxtail. Mmm.
really, really good dish. Everybody should try it. And I claim this is the world's best oxtail dish, oxtail recipe, and I challenge you to cook it and tell me it's not. So after you really cook this, and you have to use the seasonings I told you, Keith Lorraine seasonings, and cook it the way I did here, and uh, then I dare you to tell me that your oxtail is better than mine. Uh, so please do, I ask you to come and try this and uh, tell me what you think. Uh, you can comment down below, please like and please subscribe to my channel where I cook and go around the world and do all kinds of interesting and adventurous things for you. Uh, this dish, actually, um, I know, like I said, a lot of Americans are scared to try something new. Um, and they look at this as a byproduct meat. Uh, oxtail has been cooked in your heritage for many, many years. A lot of Europeans uh, that came over here, they've been cooking it for hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, the only people I haven't found any record of cooking it is the Native American Indians, but they probably were using uh, buffalo tail. Uh, I'm sure they did because uh, they didn't waste much. Uh, the Native Americans were good about consuming every part of the animal, uh, so nothing went to waste. They didn't believe in killing for sport. Um, this uh, this oxtail though has been, uh, it's not actually from an ox. Nowadays it's cow tail. It's the same cow, so if somebody calls it gamey or whatnot, that's like calling a New York strip gamey. It isn't. Um, I think people need to re-educate what gamey tastes like. <laughs> Um, but as far as this goes, uh, this is a delicious dish. It goes back into most European heritages, almost all of them. I mean, I found it in French, British, Irish, Dutch, Scottish, Swedish. They all used oxtail at one time or another. German, I mean, you name it. Russian, uh, Argentina from South America, Brazilian, Cambodian, uh, Thai, Vietnamese, I mean everybody used this stuff, African, uh, Jamaican, Bahamian, uh, you know, you, you name where it came from and they've used it, Ecuador uh, and North America, uh, you know, the, the Native American Indians I'm sure used it, that's the only ones I can't seem to find record on of a, of a recipe for this, but I'm sure there is. Um, so I tell you, I call out to all you Americans who uh, are very finicky about what you're eating. If you're going to eat steak, if you're going to eat cow, period, uh, then you got to try this because this is one of the best parts of the cow. Uh, the cheap meat and tongue are delicious too, but we'll get to that on a different episode. Uh, most people are squeamish about anything that has to do with that, but um, definitely the uh, tail is a delicious part of the cow. In the old days, they did use oxen. Uh, but a cow is a type of ox, so uh, it's the same thing pretty much. So, I, uh, I'm happy that you all joined me, and I hope that you really will try this dish, and I challenge you to try it, especially for you cooks out there who cook your own oxtail and have your own recipes on YouTube. I challenge you, order a Keith Lorraine seasoning, make this dish the way I just made it, and then tell me if it beats yours. I have a feeling it will. But that's my challenge to you. Hey, you could think I'm crazy. But post your comments back and let me know what you think. And that's Wayne signing off. Thank you for joining uh, Wayne's Kitchen. And remember, you labored over this dish, sweating over this dish. Let them do the dishes. You deserve a break. Thank you.